So there's some comments, uh, 2.4, comments on electrostatic energy. Uh, first thing that's interesting is we had two formulas to calculate the electrostatic energy. We had the energy is one half the sum of each charge times the potential at that point with the caveat that that's the potential not including that charge. And we also had the energy is one half the integral, or epsilon naught over two, the integral of E squared d tau over all space. Okay? Um, so by inspection, you'll notice that, you know, charges can be plus or minus. So this, this energy could be, you know, negative or something like that, or, you know, depending on how it works. But this one always is positive. No matter which direction the E vector is pointing, E squared is always going to be a positive number. So this vector is always positive. Um, so um, the, let's, let's calculate really quickly what the energy of a point charge is, right? So if we moved a single point charge into the space, well, this one would give you zero, right? Because when you're moving that charge into position, there's no other potential to work with. This guy would give you, however, integral over all space of e squared, so the, that's a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q um, over r squared squared times r squared sine theta d theta d phi and dr. Okay, so really quickly by inspection we see that the energy here is let's see, all space so we're going from zero to infinity for r. Um, so we basically get over two, r squared has to stay there, sine theta, d theta, d phi, that's just four pi. Um, and then we have one over four pi epsilon naught squared. And now we have the integral from zero to infinity of, oh, q squared of r squared and those cancels you get 1 over r squared dr okay so that equals gobbledygook times minus 1 over r plus 1 um, evaluated between 0 and infinity which equals gobbledygook times minus 1 over infinity which is 0 plus 1 over 0 oops something went wrong here right and um, with the spherical problem, we didn't have this issue because we weren't integrating from zero to the radius of the sphere, right? The electric field was zero inside of there, so we didn't have to do that. But now we do, and this thing blows up. It doesn't work at all. Um, so um, that's kind of a strange inconsistency. And, you know, the, the flaw uh, even appears when you're doing quantum mechanics with electric fields. So um, in Chapter 9, we're going to talk more about how to resolve this. Um, and you might want to know why you can get a solid answer here, but not here. And the answer is because the V here and the, the V here are really two different Vs, right? We kind of mudged and crossed a line there. Um, really, we, we need to consider the potential without the point. So anyway, there is a resolution to this, but it is strange. Okay, the second thing to consider is where is the energy stored? And I briefly talked about how, you know, the electric field determines the energy. It seems like the electric field stores the energy, right? And um, at this point in your, in your understanding, you, um, you, you can think of the charge holding the energy or the electric field holding the energy, and it really doesn't matter uh, which one is which, right? Um, at some point, when we get into radiation, you're going to see energy actually transferred through space. And the thing that transfers that energy is the electric field. So you're going to have to at some point admit that, yes, the electric field does have energy. And in that sense, it physically exists. It's something that actually uh, exists. Um, so uh, at this point, you can think of it either way. Um, and um, the, you know, if, if you use general relativity, you're going to find the, the energy due to uh, electric field at any given point is just epsilon naught squared, uh, or epsilon naught over two e squared. And the last thing is the superposition principle. Um, up until now, you know, you can add forces, you can add electric fields, you can add potentials, but you can't add energies. Let me show you why, okay? So the work, the energy is equal to epsilon naught over two 
of the electric field squared d tau over all space. Let's say, you know, electric fields is actually equal to two fields put together. Well, what's e squared? So e squared is equal to electric field one plus electric field two squared, or rather, it's the dot product with itself. So let's do that. So we have e, e1 squared plus two of these e1 dot e2 plus e2 squared, right? Um, so when we integrate over that, um, we have this extra cross term that's going to show up. Now, if if you uh, if basically if you double the field, so e vector uh, is is double sum over the, sum over e field. You know what I mean? And so, what's the energy of this field? Well, that's going to be um, you know this quantity squared. So e squared is going to be four e vector prime squared. Okay. So that's an important thing to consider is that when you're doubling the, the, the field, you're actually quadrupling the energy stored in that field or of the configuration.